Hello guys, it's the time for Friday class on Bioholic. I am Olivia and as I have told in my previous video that today I am gonna discuss about the mechanism of actions of hormones. Many students complain that they cannot understand this topic properly and they feel that this is the hardest part of endocrinology. But trust me, if you watch this lesson till the end, you will never ever gonna feel like that, okay? So don't miss a single part of this video. Before starting the lesson, you should keep some important points in your mind. Those are number one. Hormones are released into the bloodstream through which they travel to their target site. Number two, lipid soluble that is lipophilic hormones diffuse directly through the plasma membrane to enter the target cell and bind to a receptor protein. Lipophilic hormone means yes the steroids and the thyroid hormones. And number three, water soluble hormones that is lipophobic hormone bind to a receptor protein on the plasma membrane of the cell and then triggers a signal transduction mechanism. For example, the protein peptide hormones, catecholamines, etc. The different types of hormones, what is lipophilic, what is lipophobic hormone, everything I have already discussed in my previous videos. You can check the playlist of chemical coordination and integration of our channel. I will provide the link in the description box. So now let's begin today's class. At first I want to introduce you the term signal transduction. Signal transduction is a process in which a hormone transfers specific information from the outside of the target cell to elicit a cellular response. The ability of a hormone to induce a response in a target cell is easily mediated by a hormone receptor on or in the target cell. So our hormone follows signal transduction mechanism that means at first all the hormones bind to a receptor that may be present in cell surface or may be in cytosol or nucleus of the target cell. Then some signal is transduced or transmitted but how actually after the binding of hormones with their receptors the receptors get activated and then the signal is relayed by various other protein activation and deactivation ultimately it causes alteration in gene expression so this gene expression ultimately causes physiological changes and thus signal is transduced from outside of the target cell and causes cellular responses. So signal transduction involves three steps that is the reception, then the transduction of the signals and ultimately cellular response. Now let's learn about the receptors. A receptor is a molecule that is generally made up of proteins that binds to a specific chemical messengers like hormones. And receptors for lipophobic that is water soluble hormones that tend to be found on the plasma membrane of cells. Upon hormone binding the receptors can initiate multiple signaling pathways that ultimately lead to changes in the behavior of the target cells. And in case of lipid soluble hormones, the hormones are able to pass through the cell and nuclear membrane. Therefore, receptors for these hormones do not need to be but they sometimes are present in the cytoplasm or nucleus. Another phenomenon is very much important for receptors that is the receptor specificity. That is, specific receptor binds to its specific ligands. This receptor specificity is a very very important characteristic of all the receptors. So the ligand that is the hormone binds to the receptors ultimately causes cellular changes. Now the different types of receptors. There are mainly five types of receptors involved in signal transduction mechanism. The first one is the intracellular receptors second the cell surface receptors 
third one is the GPCR that is G protein coupled receptor fourth is the ion channel receptors and fifth is the tyrosine kinase linked receptors what is intracellular receptors lipophilic steroid and thyroid hormones diffuse across the cell membrane and binds to specific receptors present in the cytosol or nucleus these receptors are known as the intracellular receptors Next is the cell surface receptor that is present in the surface of the cell. Lipophobic polypeptide hormones and catecholamines and lipophilic prostaglandins bind to receptors present in the cell surface. Next is the G protein coupled receptors or GPCR. Ligand binding in these receptors activates a G protein which in turn activates or inhibits an enzyme that generates a specific second messenger or an ion channel causing a change in membrane potential. The receptors for epinephrine, serotonin, glucagon are the examples. The next is the ion channel receptors. In these receptors, ligand binding changes the conformation of the receptor so that ions like sodium, potassium, calcium enters and causes changes in membrane potential. Lastly, the tyrosine kinase linked receptors. Ligand binding to these receptors causes the formation of a dimer, which then interacts with and activates one or more cytosolic protein tyrosine kinases. For example, the receptors for many cytokines, interferons, and also for the human growth factors. Now, what is intracellular receptors? Suppose this is the cell membrane of a target cell and this is the nucleus. We know that uh, the lipophilic hormones uses the intracellular receptors. So let assume this is a hormone, lipophilic hormone. Then it will easily can penetrate the cell membrane. And then it will bind to a intracellular receptor causing cellular responses. Now the cell surface receptors that is present in the surface of the cell as a specific key is made for specific locks, similarly, specific ligands bind to specific receptors. And later, the physiological changes will occur. And next is the ion channel receptors. Suppose this is a structure of a target cell and here is the cell membrane and this is a ion channel that is closed and there are many ions and ligands are present outside of the cell let's see what happens due to the binding of the ligand the ion channel now gets opened and now the ion can easily enter the cell changing the membrane potential next is the tyrosine kinase linked receptors why they are called so? Because here tyrosine molecules are attached with the receptor. In this type of receptor, when ligand binds to them, they form a dimer. So, dimerization occurs in this type of receptors. That means two receptor joins with each other. And then what happens? Then they autophosphorylate each other. That means now the tyrosine molecules that are attached with the receptors get phosphorylated. This phosphorylation causes various cellular changes. And lastly, the G protein coupled receptor. Suppose this is the cell membrane of a target cell, and this is the ligand binding site of the seven transmembrane protein structure forming the GPCR. For this reason, GPCR is also known as the serpentine receptor. These domains are attached with each other by some alpha helical structures that are connected with a G protein or guanine nucleotide binding proteins. That means they always bind to GTP or GTP. And this G protein has three subunits that is alpha, beta and gamma. We will see how GPCR works but before that once again, let's understand the mechanism of action of lipid soluble hormone. So the lipid soluble hormones can enter the cell directly and then it forms the hormone receptor complex or hormone receptor element. 
this hormone receptor complex then causes various cellular changes to cause ultimate physiological response and what is the difference in case of water soluble hormones lipophobic hormone that is the peptide hormones use the g protein coupled receptor for their action they generally lead to the activation of a second messengers like cyclic mp ip3 dag and the second messenger is responsible for final hormonal action the g protein coupled receptor involves two pathway first of all the camp mediated pathway what is camp camp means cyclic adenosine monophosphate therefore it is a cyclical form of adenosine monophosphate this is the cyclical part of the structure of camp this is the only difference between adenosine monophosphate and cyclic adenosine monophosphate let's enjoy the animated version of camp mediated pathway first of all ligand binds to the receptor that is known as the first messenger upon ligand binding the gpcr gets activated and the gdp that was attached with the g protein is replaced by gtp then g alpha gtp complex is separated from the g beta gamma complex and then the g alpha gtp complex binds to another transmembrane protein that is adenylate cyclase that converts atp into the second messenger camp which ultimately activates protein kinase a all the kinase enzymes are involved in protein phosphorylation upon phosphorylation by the protein kinase some proteins might trigger glycogen synthesis might cause the breakdown of triglyceride and may promote protein synthesis but some protein phosphorylation causes inhibition of certain proteins so protein phosphorylation by protein kinase a have both stimulatory and inhibitory action after certain period of time an enzyme called as phosphodiesterase inactivates cyclic amp thus the cell's response is turned off unless new hormone molecule continue to bind to their specific receptor in the plasma membrane now the second one that is the phosphatidyl inositol pathway here the ligand that is the first messenger when binds to gpcr similarly the g protein gets activated and the gtp is replaced by gtp and the g alpha gtp complex gets separated from g beta gamma complex but here the g alpha gtp binds to phospholipase c but not with the adenylate cyclase this phospholipase c then cleaves phosphatidyl inositol 45 bisphosphate that is pip2 into two parts one is the ip3 and second is the dag that is diacylglycerol both the ip3 and dag then act as the second messengers So IP3 is the inositol 145 triphosphate and it is water soluble it diffuses through cytosol and binds to ligand gated calcium channel present in endoplasmic reticulum thus helps in the release of calcium and causes cellular changes IP3 can also be converted into IP4 by the enzyme phosphokinase and this IP4 may act as a regulator of nuclear calcium level next is the diacylglycerol that requires calcium for its action it activates an enzyme protein kinase c this protein kinase c phosphorylates various proteins and elicits different functions lipase enzymes can cleave dag into two parts that is the monoacylglycerol and arachidonic acid this arachidonic acid is later used for formation of prostaglandin Now, what is meant by second messenger? Earl Wilbur Sutherland Jr. discovered second messengers, for which he won the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1971. Second messengers are molecules that relay signals received from a hormone receptor complex on the cell surface to target molecules in the cytosol and or or nucleus. In addition, second messengers also amplify the signal. amplify the strength of the signal thus binding of a ligand to a single receptor at the cell surface may end up causing massive changes in the biochemical activities within the cell suppose of an initial signal of hormone which acts as a ligand the concentration is just one per receptor the hormonal response has got multiple steps through second messengers and each step multiplies the signal 
cascading effect that finally leading in million fold amplification. This phenomenon is known as signal amplification. Three other terms are very important in relation to mechanism of action of hormones. When two or more hormones produce same effects in target cell, the results get amplified. This is the synergistic action of hormone. For example, testosterone, FSH, both are required for normal sperm production. Number two is the permissiveness. When the presence of one hormone helps to exert the full effects of another hormone on a target cell, for example, thyroid hormones and glucocorticoids are examples of permissive hormones that exert profound effects on the ability of cells to respond to other hormones such as catecholamines. And when a hormone opposes or reverses the effect of another hormone, the phenomenon is known as antagonism. For example, insulin and glucagon make up an antagonistic hormone pair. Action of insulin is opposite that of glucagon. So that's all about mechanism of actions of hormone. I think now you have cleared all your confusions. But if you still have any doubts, you can comment below or you can also contact us through mail. Next Friday, we will learn the endocrine functions of pituitary gland and hypothalamus in details. And please don't forget to subscribe our channel by Holly. Have a good day.